Hi, what I have here on the workbench today is another box sent in from Unity. And this one is a UT8805D 5.5 digit benchtop multimeter. Some people are more familiar with multimeter counts instead of digits, so 5.5 digit corresponds to 200,000 counts. This meter is definitely of professional grade. Bench meters like this is typically used in lab settings and also for assembly line automated testing. I actually have meters of similar caliber in my lab. The Keith Lee 197 I have, for instance, is also a 5.5 digit bench multimeter. I even have a 6.5 digit multimeter, which is the Keith Lee 196. But those meters were actually made decades ago, and besides the precision, features were actually quite limited. So I'm definitely interested to take a look at this meter. The specs of this UT8805E is actually quite impressive. The accuracy is mostly within 0.015%, which is excellent. According to the brief specifications I saw on Unity's website, the maximum reading rate is also pretty good at 5,000 readings per second, and the onboard memory can hold 10,000 readings. Anyway, let me open up the box and take the meter out. is packaged nicely here. So let's actually first take a look at the uh, included accessories here. And here are the probes. Oh, the quality of the probes are actually quite nice. These are actually silicone material and it's very, very soft. I really like it. Besides that, let's take a look. We also have this alligator clips and of course we have the power cord not the power cord actually this is the oh this is the old school RS232 okay so that's interesting we also have USB a USB cable here and even have a thermal cover nice we should have a power cable here too. I will have to dump it out and take a look. Now let's take a look at what else we have. We have this, is that a calibration certificate? It's probably a certificate, no oh, product certificate. So we probably have a separate calibration, I'm just guessing here. And we also have this operation guide, which there's nothing but uh, the website for you to download the product here. Okay, so yep, so we also have another sheet here. Now, yeah, this is a calibration certificate here. All right, so now it's time for us to take this unit out. It's actually quite heavy, but I'm sure it is still very solidly. Oh, yep, the power cable is right there. All right, let me rearrange the camera angle and we'll take a closer look. All right, let's remove the package in here. Oh, this is the back end here. Let's uh, also open the plastic bag here. And here it is. Wow, this is really heavy. And here is the front side of the meter, and you can see the layout is very clean. The input jack layout is standard here. You also see that this meter is CAT2 300 volts rated, which is typical for a benchtop meter. On the front panel, we have this USB port as well. So let's actually turn it around and take a look at the back side here. On the back here, we have a physical power switch and we have this AC voltage selector. So this is another indicator, perhaps we do have a power transformer inside instead of a switching power supply. And of course we have lots of different options for connectivity. We have a RS-232 serial port. We also have a ethernet jack and a USB connector here. And here under the fuse, we also have a couple of BNC outputs. One is for external triggering and the other one marked as VM comp. So some kind of comparison output. And that's pretty much what is on the backside here. 
All right, let's plug it in and power it up. Oh, before I do that, let's actually verify the AC selector here. Let's make sure that we don't blow it up. And we're at right, right, so that's 120. Okay, so it's already set for North America. Very good. Okay, so let's power it on. All right, obviously to power it on, I have to first turn on the physical switch at the back here. And now we're in standby mode, and you can hear there's nothing going on. This is actually different than the implementation of the UPO1204 oscilloscope. If you recall, when we put it in standby mode, the fan was always on. But this one, well, either it doesn't have a fan or the fan is just off here. So let's power it on. Okay, so it does have a fan, but you can hear that the fan just turned on when I actually power on the unit from the front panel here. And it put it up right away, which is really fast. It looks like by default, the updated speed is set to slow. So let's actually change it to, let's see, fast. Oh my goodness. That's super fast, you can see. That's excellent. So let's change it back to medium. And the update rate is pretty fast as well. It's interesting to see that without anything connected, you can see we have this some sort of a cycling going on. You can see 1 1.8, 1 1.9, 2.0, 2.1 and it starts all over again. Let me part it off, actually show you that again. It looks like it just took roughly five seconds for it to power on. Now we power into this slow update speed and you can see that the readings are increasing. So let's actually wait for a few seconds. That is interesting. I wonder if it has anything to do with this input impedance here. Let's see here. 10 meg. Oh, it went down. When it's auto, it somehow started increasing. Not entirely sure what's going on here. And if we just go back to update speed medium, you can see that again, the number is going up. And let's uh, change it to 10 meg. And it goes back down. I'm wondering if that has something to do with the input impedance. Perhaps the default is much higher. Of course, I have not referred to the user manual yet. But anyway, so let's uh, go back to auto. And you can see the number is going up. And let's see if it actually exhibit the same behavior as we saw before. When we went up to, I think it's 2 point some volts and it goes back to 1.7. Let's take a look. So it almost seems like there's a capacitor charging up at input here. Yep, it's exactly the same behavior. Now I assume if I just press this uh, auto, the Z input impedance to 10 meg, and yep, you can see that there is no issue. So definitely this is probably related to the input impedance here. Anyway, so that is that. And let me put in the probe and we can do some quick measurement here. Obviously this is not meant to be a Oh, wait a second. What is going on here? As soon as I plugged it in, it seems it's not liking it. And you can see that the screen froze. Uh, let's put it in here. Maybe I should read the manual, but let's just put it in. Yeah, it doesn't seem like we're doing anything here. Okay, the screen froze. Uh, let's see here. Okay, really, it's probably expecting your probes to be in place. I have to read the manual later. But anyway, so now we're measuring again. You can see that when I short the leads, it's reading essentially zero, and now it's reading something here. Just as a quick test, I have powered on the EDC 216 voltage standard, and currently it's outputting one volt. Of course, it hasn't warmed up yet, but you can see that we're essentially measuring that one volt pretty much spot on. Let's take a look at the update speed, if it has any impact on this specific measurement here. So let's do fast. Yeah, it's only impacting the last digit here. Let's do slow, which is very similar to medium, as we have a very stable output voltage from the MV216. Anyway, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in this unboxing video. 
I definitely need to comb through the manual first before I can do an objective review. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching, and I will catch up to you next time.